Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me, your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 450, that 450 of the Agassino Zynga show, 450, how you doing, how you feeling, great, amazing, if it's your first time checking out the show, you know what to do, smash that like button, hit subscribe and of course leave me a comment down below, that'll be more than welcomed and of course support via Patreon is always more than welcome too, click on the link at patreon.com for just Agostino to get access to one bonus show as well as all the other content I post on there as well for as little as one dollar per month for as equivalent as one pound small contribution to make in order to keep the show on the road but hope you're good wherever you may be but yeah apart from that what, what's what been going on nothing much in it nothing much but everything at the same time it's been an absolute um situation all over the planet it feels like you know from mass shootings to you know stuff going wrong with the johnson and johnson stuff like just absolutely madness things but of course there's nowhere other to start you know apart from things going on here in the uk that's concerning you know football considerably that has been um, a pretty um, eventful past couple of weeks or past couple of days actually considering everything that's been going on with the european super league um developments you know happening legitimately every single minute it feels like um, i'm kind of glued to my twitter feed refreshing and following certain journalists and making sure i'm kept abreast of what's going on checking the soccer subreddit and stuff like just things have been going at 100 miles per hour but essentially the crux of the issue is that over the weekend um, there was due to be an announcement for the Champions League reform. They were going to expand the Champions League out to more teams. Of course, some of the bigger sides were naturally against this because that would mean the pie would get split between more teams who were necessarily the biggest draws, let's say. But then, of course, in terms of being a democratic um, cup tournament and allowing more teams to play, it maybe opens up to more places and makes it into more of a spectacle, adds more fixtures. You know you know the game in it, right? Um, governing bodies are going to want to have more fixtures to play because that would mean they have more earning potentials. But then if you're a big club, one of the kind of quote-unquote top six clubs in the UK or top clubs in Europe, you're probably not going to like the fact that you're having to split your pie with clubs like Young Boys or Shakhtar the next you'd rather keep. Um, the majority of it because most people are really in that tournament to see you play, right? That's the kind of preface around it. So there was always going to be a, a reaction against that, but we I don't think we kind of assumed that they were going to flesh out a complete plan with a website with kind of, you know, backers already lined up in terms of what they're going to do with the European Super League, but that's basically what happened over the weekend. And to counteract that, a group of clubs, I think at the moment it's 13 of them so far, um, or 12 or something, um, came together and basically put together a plan for the European Super League, which eventually which effectively would involve these top six clubs here from the UK, uh, May United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal and Tottenham. And considering, you know, and a couple other teams, effectively not from the rest of Europe, actually, only from two other leagues, but still the premise around it was there's going to be this league system with all these top European clubs that's going to replace the Champions League. Um, but then, of course, naturally, Champions League um, governing body were not for it whatsoever. And it kicked off a complete shit show of a situation and basically left fans in a complete uproar into what's going on. So let's just kind of quickly go over exactly what the European Super League is. And I can give you some of my thoughts and opinion, opinions around it on the other side. So what's happened 12 of europeans leading football clubs have announced that they have agreed to establish a new midweek competition the european super league governed by the founding clubs the proposal involves the clubs forming their own competition to rival the UEFA champions league which clubs are involved the big six as i mentioned plus ac milan um atletico madrid barcelona inter juve uh real madrid and uh, maybe some others consider maybe psg right? it continues on and uh, by munich i think i've extended the invitation to them it continues. It's anticipated that further three clubs will join ahead of the inaugural season, which, according to the clubs, is intended to commence as soon as practical. All right. Um, German giant Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund are do not included, or nor are French champions Paris Saint Germain. It continues here. Why has this come about now? The clubs say that the formation of the Super League comes at a time when the global pandemic has accelerated instability of the existing European football economic model further to uh, for a number of years the founding clubs have made the objective of improving the quality and intensity of existing european competitions throughout each season and creating a format of top clubs and top players to compete on a regular basis um so effectively what they're basically proposing is they're basically saying that they would much rather have more games that feature you know real madrid versus liverpool as opposed to real liverpool versus you know what celtic or something right they want the big teams facing the big teams season in season out um which then goes to show which where i think a lot of people that say are oh, 
some of the Champions League draws are fixed. I don't think so because I think if they could get away with ensuring more the bigger sides face each other, they would. But I think it just spoiled the integrity of the entire competition. And part of the beauty and the romance of it is the fact that, you know, smaller clubs can face bigger clubs and the potential of beating them in one of cup competitions. Um, so I think the fact that, you know, you have so little of those big games happening, um, you know, in some seasons, depending, you know, on what goes on is kind of evidence that it's not as fixed as people think they are. Maybe it's fixed in terms of the league positions and stuff and the, and the leagues themselves because you look at the German league, you know, Bayern Munich are going to qualify for Champions League literally every season, that kind of stuff. But in terms of the draw, I'm not too sure. It continues. The pandemic has also shown that strategic vision and sustainability commercial approach are required to enhance the value and support of the benefit of the entire European football pyramid. However, Sky Sports News reporter um, says that he um, he has come about now for one reason, only for one reason, only the reason it's happening now, he says, is because of the global pandemic. Finances of the biggest clubs have been hit. I've been saying, I keep, uh, I keep saying it is about money. And if you look at the finances of the club, like Man United playing the Champions League, they make about 50, 40 to 80 million in a good year if they win it. If they play in a new year's competition, they get a check of 250 million to 300 million to begin with. Then in the future, they will get three times as much um, a season that they get for the Champions League. I'm assuming from TV rights. If you're lo you're looking at 200 to 200 to 250 million in TV rights, they'll be able to sell some of the rights to the games themselves on their own channels and the broadcast rights all over the world. So just imagine that a Man United app where you can essentially stream any game you want for all over the world for a little as what 199 maybe up towards a 40 99 you know you said it's a no-brainer really and it goes on what does this mean for the champions league if the super league goes ahead it would effectively rival um and then hope to replace the champions league sunday's developments came just after 24 hours after the uefa were due to discuss the proposed champions league reforms the reforms were seen as an attempt to reach a compromise with the clubs in favor of a breakaway competition by offering those by offering them more matches. Um, the reform were planned to come into effect in 2024, expanding the Champions League to 36 teams, adjusting the format and increasing the number of matches from 125 to 225, which is wild. The reforms were intended to favor the club central to European Super League, even included a safety net for the four qualification spot for the clubs based on their past performances in the European competition, should they miss out on qualifying. But it seems that the reforms did not go far enough. So, in effect, there's some things you kind of have to, you know, battle against and fight against in terms of the common, you know, uh, theme out there at the moment. This whole thing about clubs being hit by the pandemic, I think it's a bit of a lie. Um, I think they've greatly exaggerated it. I think it's actually, what's actually happened is that the pandemic has been uh, a ne negative for fans of the clubs that, you know, happen to reside in the UK because what it's shown these bigger clubs is that they don't actually need us in order to turn a profit. They don't actually need us in order to get money through the door. Um, they can still stream, you know, games, obviously selling on the TV rights. They still have the ability to sell trans you know uh kits and memorabilia and all that sort of nonsense whatever it may be so they've realized that they can still do that without having actual fans in the stadium so if by a natural extension you then have a super league where you can sell the rights to watch those games directly through your own app or through another you know third party app or digital streaming platform the the potential and the earning potential for it is just limitless absolutely limitless especially if you're not really keen on actually trying to win the competition because that's never part of it people don't mention either there is a great the, the partition the participation fee or bonus whatever you're meant to get from the european super league is so high that it makes it really um not worth it even to try to attempt to win it because you're getting paid 250 between that below is 200 million just to be in the league season in season out not on top of whatever you're going to get in terms of streaming so where will there be the need for clubs like arsenal tottenham may united to really be ambitious and try and win that european super league there's no point potential to do so and for me specifically being a Man united fan it definitely explains why there's been such a laissez-faire you know give him time attitude towards Ole Gunnar Solskjaer fair enough he's done some great things at the club but in theory we're still two and a half years into his tenure we've not won a trophy we don't look close to winning a trophy um you know the, the times that we've had been close to winning it we've failed at the semi-final hurdle he doesn't really have a you know uh, a real background in winning big trophies at big clubs instead of you know if you count his time at Mulder and it seems that like the club are really hell-bent on ensuring that because he's a company man he doesn't really ruffle any feathers the players seem to like him 
that they'd rather stick with him because they know that he can basically get us top four which essentially is paying probably uh is going a long way to ensure he keeps his job more so than actually winning the title and i think the european super league is a good example of that it definitely does reward teams to just not compete and to just live off of the past glories actually ironically enough right they've kind of banking on the legacy that they've kind of built in the past which these new owners have had no part in right the legacy of arsenal the legacy of man united um the storied legacies of these clubs um, these owners are now custodians of the club have absolutely no part in it whatsoever but they're banking on that because that's what's allowed them to be in the european super league but they're also in this new league now where you don't really even require to win you just require to just you know sell the names basically sell the, the naming rights and kind of sell off the the legacy of your club in order to kind of gain viewership that way so it's a really interesting way to kind of look at football and on the other side as well from transfers this kind of calls into question everything concerning transfers because if we get to a point where we have a european super league the clubs will turn into franchise clubs similar to what they do in the nba and the nfl so essentially you'd have trades between certain teams you might have draft days which would be another potential earning um, schedule for them loads of really weird things that could be introduced florentino perez the president of Real madrid came out recently and said that they might even be looking at shortening the actual length of the games and supposedly this is all driven by the younger generations need to have um big teams only playing season in week in week out but some would argue that part of the law of seeing a liverpool face Real madrid is because you don't get to see it every day Right. The fact that you get to see those games played every week in the European Super League would kind of take away the luster and the allure of you watching those games. Fair enough, they're still going to be streamed highly because fans are going to watch. But the actual appeal of these one off games is that they're one off. They happen maybe every what one or two years or whatever it may be. Right. In very high stakes competitions that have a lot riding on them. And for it to just be in the European Super League where it doesn't really make any difference if you finished 15th or first, really, in terms of the amount of money that you're able to make. It really calls into question the idea of competition all around. And then, of course, for the league itself, you take out these top six teams for the Premier League and you kind of remove them from there. I know the other teams would be grateful because they're given the opportunity to actually win the league. But part of the reason why the league is so strong is because Burnley can go away from home and actually give United a good game. Man City could go and lose points against Fulham. That's what makes the Premier League uh, an appealing product. Once you take away those top clubs, it doesn't really make it that appealing. And then it kind of calls into question the whole allure around players and why they'd want to come up and kind of, you know, uh, play in this country in the first place, right? The reason why you'd kind of want to play your trade at West Ham if you're a Chelsea Academy player because maybe you could go and prove them wrong in terms of them letting you go you can maybe come back a second time around you can maybe be going loan to a, you know a flipping league one side and knock them out in the FA Cup whatever there are so many fairy tale stories that will be lost from the consequence of this European Super League but the most uh, appealing thing I guess from this has been the reaction from fans worldwide has been condemnation right for the most part especially in the uk fans are just not having it everyone's kind of protesting we've got fans out there in chelsea now at the moment who have basically blocked off a road and prevented the team bus from kind of going to the stadium where they're going to go face brighton i think they're playing today so there's been an actual great reaction from the fans in general and it's kind of warmed my heart to see it that this change has actually worked because according to the sources chelsea and man city are preparing their papers in terms of um you know withdrawing from this agreement i'm not too sure how likely that is because a part of me still thinks that this is inevitable anyway even if we stop it now um it's gonna happen sooner rather than later the idea of a european super league these teams obviously um quite similar to what's going on with streaming you know a lot of the big artists such as drake and taylor swift are arguing that maybe the cost of their streams is far higher than the smaller artists and maybe they account for a large percentage of the user base so they should get a far bigger chunk of the revenue stream of the streaming revenue so these clubs do have a point in that regard but the whole point of a pyramid system the whole point of tiers in football is the fact that you get to spread the wealth and also it provides teams the smaller ones the opportunity to play some of these big teams and be in a competition where you can have the possibility of knocking out a Real Madrid or a Barcelona if you turn up on a day that's what makes football appealing to watch just watching the top six sides play each other week in week out is not appealing you kind of want to see your team struggle against the Sheffield United you kind of want to see them struggle against Fulham you kind of want to see them get bad against Norwich that's what makes it more appealing but here's an article here from 
Sky News that says Europe, uh, European Super League Chelsea preparing documents to formally withdraw from competition. And obviously you've got scenes here of people protesting outside the stadium. It said Chelsea are preparing documents to firm formally withdraw from the European Super League. Sky News understands under Roman Abramovich is understood to have driven the decision. Having listened to fans protest and opted to back out, which is crazy to think that Roman Abramovich listened to his fans. It will leave just five clubs, Liverpool, Manchester United, um, Arsenal and Tottenham in the breaker competition which has sparked a huge backlash since plans were announced on Sunday. It comes after fans gathered outside Stanford Bishop protests on Tuesday with police forced to close roads and make a number of arrests. The interesting thing about it is, is that out of all these clubs the people that probably need the European Super League the most I would say is probably Arsenal and Tottenham. Obviously if this season Liverpool might need it because they might not finish top four but if you think about it Arsenal and Tottenham, especially in Tottenham's case, they haven't won jack shit. Why they even included the European Super League is beyond me. But hey, maybe they've got a global fan base that I'm really not aware of. But in terms of Arsenal, they've always qualified for the Champions League, especially when Arsenal goes around, right? Top four was kind of a trophy to him in that regard. They were able to get a lot of money from qualifying for the Champions League and kind of, you know, banking on that and using their badge and legacy and just their team as just a cash cow and not actually trying to attempt to win the competition in any meaningful way. No real investment was made into the club even though they you know built that massive stadium so if they want to just have a participation trophy and ride off the back of their legacy then european super league is perfect for these kind of teams especially even you maybe save in the man city it doesn't really have a long storied european legacy for the most part they're still trying to attempt to win their first european trophy that might come this season hopefully not but those are the teams that are really going to benefit from a european super league because it rewards non-competition Right? It rewards teams that have maybe done well in the past and aren't doing so well now. So they can just kind of ride off of whatever you know past glories that they might have. Continues. Supporters clutched placards that read RIP Football and No to Super League ahead of tonight's game ahead Brighton and Hove Albion. The six other teams have signed up to a new competition are Super Spain's Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Real Madrid along with Italy's AC Milan, Inter Milan and Juve. At Downing Street News Conference, Boris Johnson said that the UK government would do all it can to prevent Super League from going ahead, which I'm really unsure how the legality of that works because part of me thinks if you're a European Super League, you definitely got your own lawyers to kind of dot the I's and cross the T's, right? So it's unlikely that you're going to put forward such a proposal without really knowing where you stand legally and i'm really uncertain as to whether the legality of a of a government coming in and stepping in and saying you can't form your own league how did they get to adjudicate that how did they get to kind of have a say in that whatsoever it does seem a bit odd doesn't it um it does seem a bit north korea-ish like hey you cannot do this you're prov- you, you know what you mean like because you, you have you want to keep the money in the league and again what does the government have to do with the with the streaming platforms and the tv rights for football games it opens up too many questions it's very very odd but it continues um how can it be right to have a situation in which you create a kind of cartel and stop clubs from competing against each other, playing against each other properly with the hope and excitement that gives up the fans up and down the country? He said, football was invented in this country. These clubs, these names originate from famous towns and cities in our country. I don't think it's right that they should have somehow dislocated from their hometowns and home cities and turned into international brands and commodities without any reference to the fans who have loved all of them lives. Um, the Premier League said that it was considering action against the prevent um, from progressing while FIFA president Gianni Infantino warned that the clubs would have to live with the consequences of their decisions, which is the interesting part of it. A lot of people are calling for these clubs to get docked points, to get kicked out of the league, but that's never going to happen, right? If they eventually all pull out, all will be forgiven and will just kind of act like it never happened. Um, the owners will just continue living another day and it will just continue as per and it will inevitably come about one way or the other. They're going to figure out a way to make this work for sure if they do it in collaboration with uefa or european champions league whatever it may be but if anybody's holding out hope for their domestic leagues to kick out these teams who have kind of you know formed this league then you know you better just move on stop being that naive that's not going to happen they're basically kind of strong arming them into considering back in now and then once they back out everything will be okay and they might even kind of you know renegotiate the deal and make it worth their while in the long run it continues here said we just made history we just made history the news spread around Stanford Bridge like wildfire Chelsea just become the first club to form a withdrawal from the proposed European Super League before the ball has even been kicked so so again like it, it's maybe another tale of you know um 
the COVID, right? It's, it's kind of like a legacy of COVID. The fact that, you know, the, the elites, the, the higher ups have basically decided to do as they please with things that, you know, the lower rung people like you and I have enjoy and kind of haven't considered us at all in their kind of consideration process and planning and vetting whatever may be presented to us and just hope that it will be okay. And I think without the uproar, without the protesting, without the public figures coming out and condemning it, probably would have all probably went through without a hitch definitely especially when you consider the power players are involved the money that's kind of going to be able to be generated from all these clubs it just seems like a no-brainer which is why i think in general this is probably a warning shot it's definitely something we're going to have to kind of reconcile with but i think the future does it just lends itself to this happening sometime sooner rather than later would i want it to happen of course not but I'm not naive enough to expect clubs that are this money hungry, clubs with fans or clubs with owners who don't have any real ties to the legacy and traditions of these clubs to do as they please with it because essentially they own it. They can do what the hell they want. You cannot stop them. Um, you've seen what Mike Ashley has done to Newcastle. He has essentially turned that club into a joke. He's got Rio Ferdinand out here defending his decision and telling fans to go and chip in money to go and buy it. You know what I mean? Just nonsense like that. So if that's happening in our own shores, just imagine what these other foreign investors investors and owners are doing to our clubs here as well it's just absolutely insane so again maybe it's a warning shot maybe it's a wake-up call for the league maybe we might introduce that 50 plus one law in terms of ownership in terms of making it sure that fans own a percentage of the club so the ownership doesn't leave the shores here blah -de blah 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 and it's kind of held in the hands of people that actually care about the club overall but I don't know, man. I think this is a real big warning shot. And eventually we are going to live in a world where the European Super League does exist and games, you know, home games between, you know, United and Man City are played in the middle of Dubai somewhere. Do you know what I mean? To, to a crowd of like 10 stream to a crowd of millions. Um, that's possibly on the occasion or on the cards, I think, going forward. But again, good to see fans protesting and kicking up a bit of a fuss because effectively that has definitely led to what we're seeing going forward now with um, these teams pulling out and deciding, you know what, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Uh, what else do we have here? Da, 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 da. Let's move on. Oh, yeah, this is an interesting news. This is courtesy of BBC News. It says, Boot Town Festival cancelled amid COVID insurance row. So there's been a lot of talk about this. I think mostly from the secret DJ on Twitter. Definitely go and follow him. He's got two books out, book one and two. Great little um, books in terms of understanding what it is to be a professional DJ and all the things that go on around dance music and all that malarkey. Really, really good um, novel. I recommend you check him out. Um, again, book one and two. Find them on all your, you know, book publishing platforms or whatnot. The Pacific Amazon, but you know, wherever else you pay for these things. So he's been mentioning a lot about the the risk that's involved with event organizers and festival organizers and promoters putting on big scale events this summer. Um, and this comes off the back of obviously restrictions being eased here in the UK and things going back to some level of normality. You kind of got the feeling that things were gonna be okay, right, going forward. But he's been always sounding the alarm of like, hey, these big scale events aren't gonna go forward because these insurance companies will not wanna be liable, especially considering how close we are from, you know, the, the, there's not much of a gap between people getting vaccinated and where we were, you know, a few few months ago. They just they were just want to take that risk, and I guess Boontown's a good example of it because obviously it's a big scale of a festival, but it's not the biggest, right? And it's not super small. It's kind of like in the middle. So for Boontown to decide to cancel, um, knowing that they've still got quite ahead, quite a bit of lead time in terms of it going on, because I'm not sure if I'm not mistaken, it kind of happens around August, is very very concerning for everybody involved in dance music. So it's let's continue with the article it says boontown festival will not go ahead after organizers said the lack of government funding uh, sorry government backed insurance scheme left them startling staring at our 10 million gamble um the 66,000 capacity event sold out in february and was due to take place in the uh, at the maternity estate near winchester from the 11th to the 15th of august okay maybe i'm mistaken there's not mid-size 66,000 is a lot of people it continues Organizers said, why do I always feel like it's really small? I guess that's a credit to the organizers, right? They, they make a really big festival, but they make it feel small because I always felt it was smaller than that. Against, organizers said that they needed government help to ensure against a late cancellation out of the, their control. The event is hoping to return to 2022 
2022 between the 10th and the 14th of August. MPs also joined calls to protect first of all against the potentially huge COVID losses, but the government said that it's already provided help through the Culture Recovery Fund. Um, continued here. It's just abuse of the in a statement boot time organizer says we've been doing everything within our power to try and find a solution to the mind boggling conundrum of putting on a safe event, a safe world brand event for the sheer scale and capacity and intricate nature of Boontan this summer. With less than four months to go until the event, and after almost half a year of collective campaigning to the government, sadly specific cancellation and insurance for events simply does not exist at this point in time. Wild, isn't it? So COVID Pacific cancellation insurance does not exist at this time. So essentially everyone putting on events at the moment now is taking a calculated monetary gamble in terms of putting it on. So that definitely needs to be said, isn't it? Quite loudly. So everyone that's putting on an event now is really risking, you know, their own, you know, homes or whatever it may be to put these on because they're not being they're not going to you're not giving any sort of safety net if it does get cancelled for you know whatever unknown reasons that may exist it continues this means anyone putting on an event this year will be doing so without the safety net and the insurance to cover them um should covid prevent them from going ahead uh in any capacity for an independent event uh large complex as boomtown this means that a huge gamble into a eight figure sum to lose if we were to venture um venture much forward further forward and then not be able to go ahead uh, due to covid tickets for a 2020 event can be transferred for next year or be refunded the five-day arts event and theatricals also cancelled 2020 because of covid though the 2021 event it was a secret recent event seeing the likes of lauren hill and the streets take stage jesus christos mad in it so again man concerning news going forward i think it, this is another kind of sobering um situation concerning covid in terms of hey things are going well here and we're kind of going back to some level of normality but the reality is really things won't return back to some semblance of normality for a while and it will mean a lot of places a lot of people will kind of essentially be our business forever so it really does need to be stressed if you have got yourself a ticket for an event and you're planning to go to somewhere that's been able to put something on either if it's a club a bar a festival uh, a gig whatever it may be really be on your best behavior and try your best to i don't know honor the space that you're in you know buy some merch spend as much as you can at the bar because they really is no guarantee that these events are going to go forward especially considering with the, you know how crazy this virus is and things may change in the future and also the organizers are taking a real massive gamble putting on these events on they're really going out of their way of course there's a lot of reward in it too and we, you know we're not making it seem as if these guys are the red cross they obviously know like you know most of the events especially in london have completely sold out in minutes um doesn't matter what they are cabaret dj stuff like they've all been going selling like hot cakes so i'm sure the only potential is really really high but the risk involved too is super high especially when you consider how long people have been there without income right to go you know straight from lockdown and not having any ability to make any money and then going back into this volatile environment where you might have loads of money coming in but then not a lot from a third fourth wave another mutation of the virus like there's all these uncertainties that exist so they're really taking a real calculated risk and a lot of these people have probably you know not received apart from the funding that they got from the recovery fund they're not received any if any other monetary help so it's a lot of just wishing and praying that things go forward without a hitch and hopefully they do of course, Boontown will return back in 2022, you know, bigger than ever, badder than ever, so they'll be perfectly fine. But for sure, it's definitely a concerning and something to definitely keep an eye on if you are going to events, you know, don't don't take the piss. Try and be on your best behavior and just kind of, you know, be thankful that these things are on because there is no guarantee that they are going to be on, even with the vaccine, right? It's definitely been proved that this whole virus has disturbed. I wouldn't even say, what is it? It's not even the... It's not even forget the attitudes of people going to these places, right? Because for sure, um, there's a lot of people who have just kind of been put off completely from going to large scale events with 
loads of people but it's also just the infrastructure around it right the supply chain the people that you know su i don't know whatever that supply the flipping chairs and some of the toiletries and stuff it's just loads of stuff that goes into portland events that you don't even think about they've been completely fucked up like i remember reading an article about there being a real lack of um security guards right that are available to kind of start and kind of be able to look after some of these spaces and provide security and whatever it may be they're not around because of course you know most of these people have been unemployed for the majority of lockdown maybe pivoted to other careers haven't renewed their membership or their licenses whatever's going on that loads of things have been affected that people are not really aware of and all it takes is one mutation one new strain and and you know panic at the disco sets in and figures get locked down again and then we're back to square one and you know all these people's you know ability to make an income is completely scuppered and i don't think <coughs> i think a lot more a lot of think a lot of people would basically say they can't take another lockdown for sure if one more happens and it kind of causes them to be you know um sit on the sideline for a prolonged period more than four months it'll be probably the death of them or the end of them let's also say the death let's just take that back not the death but the end of them in terms of putting on events going forward so definitely if you're going to one you know treat it well uh be respectful of your space and people around you your surroundings and just really enjoy yourself as best you can because there's no guarantee these events are going to go forward um considering how volatile things are and until things settle down big events like boom time just won't be able to be they won't be viable which makes me think of all the other things that are happening what was the thing about in the forest that ricardo Villa was played in? there's a few other things happening in the uk too maybe so maybe that means if you're like a that's probably why Junction 2 didn't happen this year too because that's I guess of a similar sort of scale to Boomtown maybe not as big it may be in the 40 30,000 but still a lot of people attending one space so those kind of events you just can't risk it but if you're throwing something I guess in like equivalent of a park it might be a little bit easier to do but again still a risk going forward still a risk so yeah big up Boomtown organizers hopefully they're able to put on that event in 2022 um what else do we have here du, 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 du. what else do we have here what else do we have here let's move on to that one. Oh, this is funny this is courtesy of mixed mag it says organizers of Asia chase the gig in manchester find ten thousand pounds Ten thousand. The rapper made an appearance at an impromptu gig at Plate uh, Platfields Park on Sunday. I seen a few people do this. I saw a video of Dappy from N Dubs doing a similar sort of thing, where you kind of go in a car and just perform on top of it and have people running down the side of the street, and then he stopped somewhere where there's a screen and he was, you know, doing his songs, whatever it may be. Some of his solo stuff that probably no one really knows too tough. But hey, um, everyone's trying to do something in it because. I guess if you're an artist, part of the reason why you perform or part of the reason why, you know, you record music is to perform it in front of a crowd and to kind of get that, you know, that vibe and that energy back. And there's just no amount of live streaming is ever going to replace that. So I could definitely understand artists being at home, you know, cheesing and really kind of fiending to be out on stage and performing in front of their fans. But considering we're so close to things reopening in a really safe and legit way, it just seems like a waste of time and really does probably not worth the fine especially when you consider the fact that you know what was sold there a couple of t-shirts some cds whatever it may be there's no real big earning potential to earn that money back i doubt they even they probably spent more putting on the event right then then they did probably uh, having to pay the fine itself but hey i guess you have to do what you have to do it says here organizers of aj tracy's gig in manchester have been fined ten thousand pounds the rapper made an appearance at an impromptu gig in platfields park on sunday drawing a crowd of hundreds according to the local media final footage shows that the west london mc rapping along to a track played by a portable speaker during a pop-up show hyping tracy's new album flu game which again imagine being signed to a record label as an artist and having to put out an album during a global pandemic right and then trying to promo it it's just because I imagine a lot of people like myself, even, you know, again, I'm a DJ, so, I, you know, I play music out and stuff, so I listen to a lot of things, but even my, you know, listening of music has really really decreased during the lockdown it's just you know the 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 the, the things that i do day to day in order for me to listen to stuff like going to the gym going to work da -da -da, moving around they're just not happening as often as they would be right because obviously things are not reopened to a level that they would be when life was back to normal so that whole routine has been disturbed somewhat so i'm sure that's definitely affected people's streams i guess if you're the bigger artist doesn't really matter you Taylor Swift, your drinks they're still probably streaming high high numbers but if you're people like AJ Tracy, you need, 
you need people to be outside for your music to bang, right? You need it to make sense of that because, again, I'm not really a big fan of the guy's music, whatever, but whenever I've been to Ghana, I've always seen him around, right? Loitering, walking around, touching people, being cool, and just being a pretty level-headed, chill dude. So part of his basic appeal in his brand is the fact that he's accessible in that regard. So not having that accessibility and being able to put yourself front and center in front of your fans and remind them, hey, I'm still around, I've got a new album coming out, they must make it really difficult to promo stuff so this is probably a, a risk probably they would have worth taking right i'm assuming i hoped i would i would hope that they had some sort of agreement with the organizer and said hey if you get a fine we're gonna help you out and pay some of it too i'm hoping it's just not all left to him to pay or he or she whatever or day um but yeah I, I don't envy being an artist now during this time it's probably the worst and the best of times i guess in terms of acquiring fans is the best because you've got a chance to hit everybody because everyone's at home you know as long as you put music out on a consistent basis it's good quality people will maybe give you a chance but people have also fatigued right with the with the kind of stimuli that they're getting in they just want to you know go back to normal they're thinking about other things they've got other stresses in their mind i don't know whatever it may be they're not in the mood to discover stuff there's loads of stuff going on it's obviously got the supreme uh north face jacket on their core cool. said the rapper who made the appearance at Improv Street Gig, the, the, the fan footage shows West London MC rapping onto a track. Um, that's him. It's interesting that they somehow managed to create a stage and with security guards, got like six security guards there in the middle of a, of a cage somewhere in Manchester, right? Trying to protect it and make sure everything's okay. <laughs> effectively it's a, it's a kind of complicit agreement you've just agreed to just not jump over but it's a public cage i can just go wherever i want you know what i mean but they've somehow created this weird distance between the fans that's pretty cool to see he continues the lp was released on friday and elaborate grove star has been on the promo trail appearing on the jennifer ross show capital lecture and signing records in a branch of hmv in london he was reportedly in birmingham on sunday and was planning to visit bristol before the secret gig in manchester was shut down by police tracy took to twitter to shout out fans on birmingham and manchester before apologizing for the amount of people who turned up at Platform's gig and conceded that a trip to Southwest would not be possible. So it's a calculated risk, isn't it? You know you're going to get a lot of backlash. You know you're probably going to get cancelled online and you're just willing to take it. you got your apology already lined up like Rita Ora already typed up and stuff. He did a video and you're ready to go. Here he is, apologising to everybody. Yo, people, listen. Big love, Manny and Bram. Thank you for coming out um, and copying some CDs and whatnot and showing some love, but it's not going to be safe for me to come to Bristol. I didn't expect that many people to turn up money and genuinely yeah man it's just not okay for me to go ahead so i'm gonna head home to london but um Lose. yeah man i appreciate you lot showing support and when it's safe to do so i'm definitely gonna come back and do some shows so yeah man big uh, Andy Burnham, the mayor of Manchester, has confirmed the organisers of the gig have been fined £10,000 for breaching the COVID lockdown rules. Fixed penalty notices have also recently been issued to an equipment supplier of the organisers of a rave and a crowd of people who attended the rave in the disused vault. Bank, but sorry, large scale outdoor events are due to resume on June 21st. Again, not really worth the risk, but again, maybe it is. Really, maybe it is. Because what else are you meant to do in terms of promo? People aren't really checking or listening to your stuff like that. Because this feels like to me like desperation. It feels like to me for that depression Because I'd imagine with the dearth of flipping artists available now at the moment, especially in the UK. I'd imagine, I don't know, it depends on how much, how much does AJ Tracy actually stream? I don't know. I don't really listen to his stuff. Maybe he's super popular, but this does seem a bit desperate. It does seem like somebody really wanting to make sure that people know that his album is coming out, um, especially his fans wanting to make sure, because the, the best thing about when things are, re when things, when life is back to normal, the best thing is that you get the chance to, you know, get someone like myself that doesn't really check for his music. I might actually check for it because, you know, I'm about, I'm in a shop, his stuff's playing in Top Shop, it's playing, it whatever, you know, you just happen to, you see a post to someone sure this, right? That's what he's hoping for because his fans are always going to purchase his stuff. But in times like this, I'm assuming some fans are maybe not paying attention or not aware you drop stuff because, you know, how many albums have dropped and you've forgotten about, you have no idea released, especially if you're not paying attention and you're not on people's pages like that, whatever it may be. It's just easy for things to just slip by the wayside. So he's having to really kind of make sure he reminds his fans, hey, I've got things coming out and also creating a bit of content to be, so it can go viral, so it can catch someone like myself who's not a fan of his work to be, to get kind of, you know, to get my attention. Be like, oh shit, he's got something coming out, you know, add on Spotify about, Blah, blah blah maybe buy a ticket for sure so 
it's a very much um, like I mentioned. It's a it's not a position I envy. Um, again, you know, you're having to really come up with some clever, interesting ways to kind of get people's attention in a time when you know people have got you know way bigger issues that they're probably worrying about. You as well as an artist, you don't want to be you know pushing yourself onto people too much. I think most artists, pure ones, you know, feel a little bit cringy when they have to kind of really go on the self promotion you know super hard it always feels a bit disingenuous because you feel as if your work is good enough it should kind of get to the right people but that's not really what happens the truth of the matter is it kind of you you need a bit of payola you need a bit of kind of guerrilla marketing you need a bit of selfless self-promotion or to really get your stuff out there if you don't do that you're just gonna be crickets so you know again uh i have a lot of sympathy for the guy hope it works out for him hopefully they were in cahoots with the organizer in terms of paying the fine hopefully the organizer's probably age trace himself anyway right i'm assuming his label probably did it maybe for a third party but again man look, look what people are having to do during these strange times how it's affecting even some of our quote-unquote biggest artists here in the uk um they're really kind of feeling the strain of you know not being able to perform live and do things and sell merch and all that good stuff so hopefully things get back to some semblance of normality very soon very very soon next on the list what else do we have here what else do we have here let's see what time we got here cool nice um we have here an announcement of rolling loud miami 2021 and i'm very confused by the lineup honestly i think maybe it makes sense for a rolling loud lineup because you know they have the usually the same group of people performing at every single rolling loud but the headliners are very odd right asap rookie travis scott and post malone on consecutive days the one that really sticks out for me is Rocky. I'm a big fan of his, have been for a while, you know, big fan of ASAP Mob and all the, you know, associated members in that crew. Still think ASAP Nas is probably quite possibly the most talented member, maybe the most laziest of the group. Um, you know, it's a shame that he hasn't really taken music seriously and kind of decided to become an Instagram influencer, which probably I don't blame him for. I think if you get paid to just be able to wear, you know, Comme de Garçon and shout out people about, you know, you being the first person to wear supreme it probably is more lucrative to have it to slave away in the studio make a record record videos do promo it's just annoying so i get the appeal of doing that right just kind of designing colorways for rebox and stuff is probably way more fun um to do and way more lucrative to do for somebody like him who's probably never ever going to be like a you know a, a tier you know artist he's probably always going to uh, uh, you know stay in some sort of like lower level regardless of his talent just because of the way things are but he definitely is my favorite in the group overall i definitely am a big fan of asap now so again big fan of asap mob and that whole crew but it's no it's no kind of it's not uh, you know i'm not out of turn in saying that rocky's kind of had a bit of a disappointing career maybe in terms of fans maybe not in his eyes i'm sure he probably sees himself more as a you know cult figure icon sort of dude right and he's not really concerned about not being the biggest superstar in the world but he has so much potential and so much tools at his disposal to kind of really reach the higher echelons if he wanted to but it's just never really worked out i'm not too sure it's because of the music he tries to make of the albums not really being as cohesive as they probably should do his just inability maybe to turn around work quickly i don't know whatever the issue is something's happened in the last three years has basically left um as a rocket position where he's kind of flattered to deceive a little bit right and it feels like in the kind of battle between the guys with braids and the guys that get mistaken for each other and ironic or ironically by paparazzi to get a rise out of them because that was a that was one of the common memes in it with all these street paparazzi people whenever they saw travis they'd call him rocky whenever they said rocky they call him travis right to kind of just get a reaction out of them and obviously go a bit viral obviously over time that may be turned into an issue i'm not too sure what happened but i always get the feeling that rocky and travis don't really like each other i'm not too sure what that is it might have to do with thailand odd future because the odd future and thailand weren't really that fans of travis i remember when travis was wearing their this is a weird thing to remember but i remember there was a point where i think there was odd future vans i think the vans or converse one or the other and i think travis was really rocking them hard he loved them he I think he bought every pair and i never saw tyler acknowledge him once like zero nothing it was always kind of like dust and i don't know what that was maybe it was because of you know his association with Big Sean and Tyler had that weird thing with Big Sean in terms of labels and cosigns and stuff. I don't know. Something happened there. But I always got the feeling that they're not the closest, right? So it also got I also felt like the industry maybe pitted them against each other and maybe anointed Travis as the winner in terms of that battle, right? And Travis has kind of gone on to become this um, global superstar right in terms of his appeal he's basically you know g he's basically um what is he 
he's basically safe in terms of brands because he hardly speaks he doesn't do anything crazy he's not involved in many big scandals he kind of keeps his head under you know um under you know he kind of keeps his head down and just does his work right for the most part does a couple of remixes jumps on a few singles here and there and just keeps it moving and it feels like you know people have kind of anointed travis as kind of like the winner in that battle but it does feel odd considering you know the reception of the albums you know where we are now in culture where we are now with artistry that is that rocky will be headlining a day for um you know rolling loud in miami it just feels odd it feels like something that might have happened in 2018 that made my that might have made more sense but in 2021 is are people really checking for rocky like that or is his music streaming so well and in that because the fact that he's got such a broad appeal from guys to girls from fashion to rapper people that it just makes sense if you're rolling loud and you want to really guarantee you sell out because i imagine you know especially after the pandemic and how long people have been without going to events and events putting you know being able to put an event if you're rolling loud and you're you're kind of booking this dearth of artists i'm sure not all of them are going to be paid but still a high percentage of them will be paid you want to make sure that it's going to be worth your while you don't want to have an event that's only selling 70 percent of the tickets you want to make sure it's in a high 80s maybe potentially 90s and obviously selling out so the best way to do it is to cover your bases and kind of get every sort of demographic of people because i guess in this respect rocky travis and post malone cover different kind of groups of fans in the hip-hop um, kind of ecosystem obviously post malone isn't a rapper but he still kind of you know straddles and straddles in that world somewhat so that makes some sense in that regard but if you're Rick Ross, would you be upset that you're not headlining of Rolling Loud and Rocky is? If you're Playboy Kaya, would you be upset? Little Baby, maybe? He's had a crazy couple of years. Should he be headlining that instead of Rocky? 21 Savage, even? Um, City Girls, considering how much attention they get on the blogs and stuff, maybe they should be headlining. I don't know. It just feels a bit odd. Money Bag Yo, even? Come on, there's a lot of people here who are 42 Doug. Like, when's the, when's the last time Rocky had a billboard hit? I can't really think of again this is not something i care about because i don't look at the those billboard charts but i know if you're trying to put these events on you know you're going to look at all these kind of commercial chart listings and stuff because they're going to play a big role in terms of who gets what slot in sure to making sure you sell through the event so a lot of people on there that would be i don't know a little bit annoyed if they're not headlining but again maybe that just goes to show how much credit in the bank rocky he's got from all those years of kind of you know doing his bit with his albums asap mob tapes um you know his features his allegiances and stuff or maybe put him there i don't know i don't know it just feels strange it, this would be similar to like if kanye west was headlining a date it's like who's really checking for his music right now i know the legacy i know what he's done in the past but in terms of what have you done for me lately which is what the music industry is it just seems a little bit odd that's the only thing it just seems a little bit odd the rest of the dates are pretty solid travis scott Headlining on a Saturday, Young Fug with Young Fug, Roddy Rich, Kodak Black, Gunner, Sway Lee, Don Tolliver, Lil Dirk, Nav, Polo G, Shekel West, which is interesting considering everything's happened against him, legalities and all that malarkey. So it goes to show people don't get cancelled hip hop, as I've always said. Young Dolph, Chief Keith, Coyle Ray, Wale, Blueface, J.I., Keith Glock, loads of pretty good people. Plus Malone, Sunday, Lil Uzi Vert, Nice, The Baby, Megan The Stallion. Tiger, Gucci Mane, Rod Wave, Lil TJ, Jack Harlow, Lil Yachty, Suicide Boy, Pooh Shasti, St. John, Young Blue, T-Pain, Fetty Wap, Mulatto, Riga Nasty, Puya, Tyler Yewa, OGZ, Young Nudi, Five Year Foreign, K-Camp, Short, uh, Shorty Shorty, Partisan Fontaine, really? What's he going to be performing there? Odd, isn't it? Odd, odd listing, that regardless, but Ruby Rose is there, so that's a good look for her. Bobby Fish Scale. Yeah, Mariah the Scientist, that's a nice look for um, her too. BFB the Pac-Man, oh wow, it's amazing. Really good listing. So yeah, interesting interesting list of people here. I'm not going to lie. Interesting, li interesting list of headliners. Kodak Black is there too. He'd be interested. Ghana because not headlining. Interesting, isn't it? Really interesting considering. But I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. And Rocky's still got that allure for most people. But interesting that he's headlining a day on Rolling Loud in 2021. You know, but maybe it's because we've missed a year. Do you know what I mean? We've legitimately skipped a year, so this makes sense if it's 2020. Maybe with his Rihanna stuff going on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It just feels odd. It just feels odd. 
what else do we have here? What else do we have here? We have that. We have this. I don't know what we have here. Let's move on from that. What else do we got? Actually, let's see what's happening with this. Yep. Let's move over here. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is the one. Yes. So, this is courtesy of Hypebeast. It says Facebook confirmed its Clubhouse competitor app is coming this summer 2021. Crazy. And I think I mentioned it prior on a few shows. I think I've, I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it on a few shows. I'm pretty sure I have. I yeah, I'm pretty sure I mentioned a few shows that I've, ne I've never really been sold on Clubhouse. I always thought it was an app that kind of worked because of covid um not because it's a great app i think most people were basically using it because you know they're stuck indoors with nothing more to do and it was a kind of new um entertainment platform especially in the early days when it was predominantly targeted towards influencers and you know notable famous people and stuff so hearing them talk candidly at home on this app that you couldn't record stuff and it kind of lived ephemerally on this app itself kind of kind of went away like a snapchat sort of thing was quite cool for a small period of time but then again you know over a period of time it felt like people got tired of the velvet rope they got tired of you know not being able to get invite they got tired of the kind of um self-indulgent nature of the app you know hearing people that sound like myself pontificating about nonsense issues hearing you know people that are kind of um, you know describing themselves as business gurus who haven't got one business or successful business they are currently operating um you know selling people dreams people sharing all kinds of nonsense stories on there trying to go viral it just felt annoying and you know? it got, got a bit cringe got a bit annoying but there was definitely something in it in the idea of kind of these live audio podcasting sort of platform these things working for regular folk um but it just needed to be done by somebody else because i think club has kind of wasted the opportunity by kind of you know targeting so many influencers and celebrities in the beginning they've maybe kind of um ruined their ability to maybe connect with the general public in that regard so when a, another social media app like a twitter or, or like a facebook decides to do the same thing it's definitely going to blow because already they have a ready-made user base that they can kind of tap into and it's going to be integrated to the current app that they have going on and this is exactly what facebook is doing and when you consider the current you know landscape of facebook you know from you know older people that might be your parents or family members who kind of are on there religiously spouting off their conspiracy theories and arguing with people in their local area this has definitely got a lot of scope to really succeed in a really big way for facebook um when you consider their user base and you know how they're on it every single day and stuff so this is definitely something i think will work for them so it continues here Facebook is officially going all in on audio, announcing that it's intending to launch its own social media app to compete with Clubhouse. The platform has confirmed that the new app will first roll out to groups and public figures to test before eventually making its way to Messenger. Different from the Clubhouse, the always Facebook's live audio room will allow users to record their conversations as well as share them to others. Hosts will also be able to make money off the app, charging people to access their rooms through either a one-time fee or subscription basis. So they're essentially just doing what Facebook always do, where just going to copy the entire app of clubhouse kind of gut it and just do their own thing it's just funny it's already considered that mark zuckerberg was on a clubhouse room recently um so obviously doing a bit of recon work and kind of seeing how it works you know from the background and then they're going to completely gut it and add all their own features onto it but i like the idea of being able to tip people or being able to subscribe in terms of you know ensuring that you want to get access to the rooms and connecting with people and share and you know integrating it into messenger of course which again makes messenger an integral part of the Facebook experience they're not going to let that one go it continues here to entice users to join Facebook has created an audio creator fund to support emerging audio creators the conversations will then be turned into what Facebook calls sound bites an upcoming feature that allows people to share and create short audio clips alongside algorithmic feed for promotion Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg told The Verge the high level picture here is that we think that audio is of course also going to be a first class medium and that there are all there is also different products to build across the whole spectrum Zuckerberg alludes to Facebook's plan 
trying to uh, place more emphasis on the podcast industry. With that in mind, the CEO also confirmed that the partnership with Spotify is imminent. Wow, bringing one of the audio's biggest players to Facebook. This is a really big deal. It is evident that the audio has found this moment during the COVID-19 pandemic um, expanding over time. Facebook plans to begin launching the audio products in the next few months. However, there is no official date as to when live audio rooms will become available to all Facebook users. So if Clubhouse wasn't worried before they should be worried and whatever valuation that was placed on it prior you know in the billions is grossly grossly overestimating its value especially when you consider how easily these other apps are going to be able to copy and basically siphon off whatever you know um unique selling point that they had in the market um then of course they've got a little clip here showing some of the features of it see what it looks like excited to announce Hey, thanks for meeting me here. Yeah, no problem. You uh, wanted to record something together? I do. Actually, I'm already recording. Wait, but like you know it's crazy loud here, right? <laughs> I know. So I'm testing out a bunch of new audio stuff that Facebook's building, like smart noise reduction. Wow. So you won't hear any of the street noise when I play it back. And what, it'll just like disappear? Yeah, it's like camera filters, but for audio. So you can edit and you can add effects and all that stuff. Right from your phone. Yeah, well, what cool. do you want to hear? How about, you know, could you make me sound like a chipmunk? <laughs> okay, perfect, yeah. Or uh, like, you know, one of those walkie-talkie things. Or, I don't know, maybe a robot. Or maybe some ASMR to put me to sleep. Love it. Okay, so we just listened to the playback. What do you think? I mean, that's crazy. It's basically like a sound studio. Right in your pocket. All right, how should we wrap this up? Um, how about some outro music? Perfect. Play us out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I'm not going to lie, that is pretty cool. So definitely be on the lookout for that soon and again if you weren't a fan of clubhouse you've definitely got an easy app for you to kind of to tap into and get involved on there a simple solution for you know people who've kind of wanted to always get involved in clubhouse but didn't want to you know go around the rigmarole of having to kind of beg somebody for an invite and do all that kind of you know nonsense stuff that happened prior i was lucky enough to kind of just sign up to it and i guess some people that i know were on the app and um luckily approved my application on it and i spent about what best part of a couple of days on there and i instantly hated it because obviously most of the people on there sound like myself so just hearing a bunch of other people just talking absolute nonsense about things that really don't matter for the best part of a day just isn't really something i vibe with and again like i said it's just it's proper situational with covid and people being at home it makes complete sense that that app would be this successful but in terms of things going forward and the world reopening, I just don't see how that's going to work, especially if they keep it closed. Once they reopen it, maybe they'll, maybe, you know, Clubhouse has an opportunity to end up being like the Spotify of whatever they're doing. So they're always going to have a particular niche with some people. Um, but in terms of overall appeal, in terms of being able to kind of touch the global masses, the Facebook option is just too big in it. Do you know what I mean? There's so many people on there overall for Clubhouse to ever catch up. So they're going to have to just, I guess, get really niche and try to appeal to a subset of people maybe startups i don't know what it's going to be overall but i i definitely think there's a limit to how much you know you could be sitting there listening to founders pontificating and just you know uh, masturbating over their own you know nonsense startup that doesn't really matter but maybe i'm wrong maybe there is a real scope for it and people are really dying for that kind of thing going forward but i just don't think so i think that we're definitely going to see that um they definitely re definitely overestimate their importance definitely overestimate their value and whatever the ipo was set at prior estimations is definitely going to be decreasing somewhat a considerable amount once this app doesn't even get rolled out properly because you know twitter's already got their own thing going on at the moment i think it's called spaces it's similar to clubhouse too we can do a similar sort of thing and that's fairly popular from what i've seen so far people using it in the beta testing as always whenever i log into twitter i've always seen people kind of creating rooms and doing stuff so for sure it's definitely working for a group of people out there but you know they definitely missed a boat in that one they should have just opened it up and made it accessible to more people when it was definitely during its infancy but then i can understand if you're clubhouse the reason why you wanted to kind of have it be on a velvet rope was the fact that it kind of made it worth getting right it kind of made it appealable it made it, made it desirable and without that desirability and kind of like you know FOMO and whatever it may be there's no appeal to it because it essentially does whatever ever whatever else everyone else does in terms of group chats in terms of clips and stuff but you know it had its moment 
again as there's still a scope for it to kind of rescue itself and decide to be a little snapchat platform you know that kind of appeals to a particular niche like i said you know snapchat stores are very um popular with a subset of people majority of people are really young um it seems like for the most part some of my older friends are not necessarily big snapchat users and they seem to be doing fairly fine um you know every year when you think it's going to fail and if it's going to crumble they manage to secure more funding they just keep growing they even put out glasses that were completely what a bit of a failure you say the glasses and they still managed to bounce back from that so they're definitely doing something right behind the scenes i don't know what it is maybe it's a tv series that they have running on there i have no idea really i hardly use mine if ever so um definitely a scope there for them to kind of rescue it that way but i would wonder let, let's see with the wolf facebook what's it called launch rooms what's it called what's it actually called, what's it actually called the actual thing uh, Facebook live audio room it's a bit of a shit name in it right but hey um, live audio rooms coming soon let me know if you're going to use it will it be something you're going to be adding to your social media arsenal your content making uh, tools will it be something you're going to integrate into stuff you're doing for myself probably it might be an interesting thing to kind of get involved with, especially when it comes to clips and maybe doing q and a's and whatnot going forward but let me know in the comments if that's something that you'll be interested in i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that going forward but i think that might be it and i think that might be it i think i'll leave the rest of the stuff for later that might be it for the excellent zinger show episode number what 450 yeah 450 if it's your first time check out the show you know what to do if you're watching via youtube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below if you're listening via the podcast app a five star review and a share will help the show go a long way and of course support via patrons always more than welcome at patreon.com for just agostino that's patreon.com for just a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o to get more access to bonus episodes available every week for little as one dollar equivalent of one pound per episode make sure you check on there get involved at agostino's inc or patreon.com for just agostino and i'll see you guys again very very soon take care peace